I'm proud that in my time in Congress, this committee has demonstrated a tremendous track record of working together to find bipartisan consensus on a number of issues. Yes, we've often disagreed, but we've always worked together in good faith toward a solution. Earlier this year, we worked together to pass bipartisan solutions to spur competition from generic manufacturers and to bring down drug prices. Yet those solutions have been steamrolled by the House Repo Democrat leadership, whose sole focus has been to appease their most extreme socialist members to put politics over progress. It's been said before, and I'll say it again, because the American people should understand this. This is partisan politics at its worst, and the most vulnerable among us will suffer the consequences. We are better than this. Beyond the broken process, I have some substantive concerns with H.R. 3. First, to characterize what this bill calls negotiation would be laughable if the consequences of the policy were not so serious. In a negotiation, the parties are free to walk away, and each has some form of leverage to influence the outcome. But that is not what this bill proposes. No, under this bill, a drug manufacturer, whether they are a startup or a, a, an established enterprise, has no negotiating power. Their choice is simple. They can accept the price set by the government, or be subject to a punitive excess tax, or they can move overseas. No one with a straight face can say that is negotiation. At best, this is socialist price setting. At best, or excuse me, at worst, it's unconstitutional confiscation. Either way, it is an exercise in real yielding raw government power that will have dire consequences on both future drug innovation, patient safety, and American jobs. Regardless of what you want to call it, this bill will have a crippling effect on scientific innovation. Drug manufacturers spend billions to research, develop, and and bring life-saving drugs to market. If they can't recoup a profit, either due to price setting or through government confiscation, they will simply stop investing the resources to develop life-saving therapies. And no one in this room can tell me that this will not be a consequence of H.R. 3. For one, we know what price controls have done to innovation in Europe. There is no innovation in Europe. Further, as we've talked about numerous times today, we know that the CBO has stated this bill will be a drag on innovation. More importantly, what we don't know, however, is what life-saving cures will be foreclosed, what diseases will not be cured as a consequence of this bill. To that end, I encourage my friends in the patient advocate community, those champions at organizations like the Alzheimer's and ALS associations, and those advocates at the National Organization for Rare Disorders to stand up, speak up, and speak loudly. You know firsthand the consequences of this bill. Lastly, this bill also threatens patient safety. Last year, the FDA announced that a carcinogen had been found in a widely used blood pressure medication and oversaw a recall. And who was the culprit? Who was responsible for contaminating the drugs and placing American patients at risk? It was manufacturers in China and India. In response, some of my colleagues have rightly stated that we should work in the private sector with the private sector to find ways to rebuild our domestic manufacturing capacity. They've also rightly noted but that failing to do so leaves too much risk of our drug supply chain under foreign influence and push, puts patients at risk. I agree with this, and I hope that we can work on solutions to shift our supply chain back home. Yet, inexplicably, we are now considering a bill that, if, if enacted, would further tear down U.S. manufacturing by implementing socialist price controls masquerading as so-called negotiations and push even more manufacturers into the arms of Chinese companies. Given that China's history of lax oversight and the resulting threat to patient safety, this is unacceptable. Given these concerns, I ask that my colleagues put politics behind, vote no on H.R. 3, and commit to a process that we can work together to lower drug prices, prioritize innovation, and protect public patient safety. Thank you, Mr. Would Chairman. the gentleman yield his last 45 seconds? I'll yield the last 45 seconds.